I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, let's uh, want to rattle off a bunch of topics that have been in the news here the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've got about four or five items here that I'm going to roll through here in the next eight to ten minutes. <clears throat> so I continue to see, you know, <laughs> thought I'd put this to bed a long time ago, but I continue to see through the news, through Twitter channels that I follow, some of the real estate news networks, uh, the fallout from our the former CMHC head. Evan Sindal. They're still kind of unwinding some of the things that he was responsible for as the head of CMHC. As you guys know, I've had, you know, many discussions about him in the past. Bit of a strange man for sure. You know, head of CMHC, predicting markets that are going to go down. Um, you know, got everyone, got picked fights with everyone from realtors to mortgage brokers to bankers. And here he is as the head of CMHC providing insurance uh, to, to these banks and uh, you know, creating a whole lot of funny decisions and, and arguments and, and petty little things. But he stepped down, as you guys know earlier this year, where he is now, I have no idea. I'm sure he landed somewhere. But there's been a few things that have come across my desk here about him that I'll share with you guys here. First thing, it was just announced that CMHC now has gone back on that decision that they did last summer. Uh, tightening their requirements for their default insurance. So I won't bore you with all the details. It had to do with increasing the uh, gross debt to service ratio. They bumped that up about 10, made it about 10 or 11% more difficult. Also bumped up the minimum credit score uh, from 600 to 680. Well, now they just announced yesterday that they're getting rid of all that stuff. They're taking the credit score back down to 600 and lowering that debt service ratio to where they had it previous to that uh, to them tightening it and you know this isn't surprising they were criticized by this all last year when this was announced it wasn't going to make any difference and what it was going to do it was just going to take business away from CMHC because their competitors like Genworth and Sagan and Canada Guarantee uh, did not tighten them so what's happened here CMHC just announced that we were losing money it didn't have any effect it was ineffective and it caused us to lose market share. They won't reveal how much market share they lost, but they, lo they had their lunch eaten by the competitors. So they're going back to the way it was before. Second item, again, with Mr. Sadal here again. There was just a study here that was just uh, in the Western Investor uh, magazine and online. They did a detailed study uh, put out by, um, uh, what is the, uh, it, it's one of the large uh, uh, mortgage analytical companies that put out these reports on the average down payments that Canadians put on their homes. Now remember, including last year, remember Mr. Sadal, he was, we were arguing back and forth, claiming that people are buying homes with high ratio financing, 5% down, they're over leveraging themselves. You put 5% down, the market goes down 10% and they're underwater. Yeah, no kidding, they are. But I was arguing at that time, as were a lot of people that where I work in Vancouver, and it's the same thing in Toronto, we're not using high ratio mortgages here. We're not using 5%. We're using conventional mortgages here. You have to put down 20% minimum if you're buying a property for over a million dollars or more. I can tell you that the majority of my sales now are over a million dollars. I do more sales over a million than I do under. The ones that are under are just under, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred K. So all those buyers are using 20, 25, 30, 35% down all day long. If you want to buy an investment property, because I do a lot of business with investors, again, the bank is going to require you to put a minimum of 20% down. In some cases, it's more than that, 25, 30. You've got to take a conventional mortgage. So here's the numbers. And again, with this, as I always was arguing last year too, and I've talked about this many times on my blog, you know, if you want to know you know, from the front lines, what people, A, where people are getting their down payment from, funds from, what they're buying and how much they're putting down, talk to a realtor, talk to a high producing realtor that's doing 50, 60 deals a year and is working in a brokerage that's doing thousands of deals every year. Because I'm privy to all this stuff. I'm privy to this on the listing side as well as the buying side. I can tell you exactly what every deal I've done on the listing and buying side, what that buyer is putting down as far as down payment. And it's for the vast majority, 
it's conventional mortgage. I can count on one hand the amount of high ratio that I've dealt with in the last five years. And in that case, it's maybe something like a, a small unit on SkyTrain, an older one bedroom condo in Richmond for 400 grand or 500 grand, and maybe they're putting down 15%. But 5% is out the window here. The banks just won't <laughs> approve it. And, and uh, you know, back to, you know, the banks have often said too, are the best gatekeeper here, back to CMHC. You know, it's, the banks are not cavalier lenders here. And CMHC tightening those requirements was useless. The gatekeeper here is the Canadian banks, the lenders. They're not cavalier lenders, very difficult to qualify for a mortgage. Uh, anyone that has, has bought a house recently and had to go through the steps of getting pre-approved can, can uh, attest for that. But here's the hard numbers here. The average down payment in British Columbia for 2020, this is for the entire province, was $159,762. That's for the entire province. That's the average down payment to purchase a home. And they're putting everything in there, detached condos, townhomes. Um, the average percentage of a down payment for this is for all of BC is 23%. 23% down is what the average purchase uh, down payment was. And I can tell you for Vancouver, it's, it's probably much higher than that. 30, 35% down. Give you a, a, a quick, uh, in Toronto, the average down payment is 20.3%. So again, people are using conventional mortgages there. Unlike what you know, Mr. Sedell was arguing with me about that people are over leveraging and using 5%. They're not, not where I work. They might be doing that in PEI or Newfoundland or much uh, lower price markets, but even there, I think that they're using far more than 10 or 15, uh, 10%. 5% is out the window. By way of comparison, they say 159,000 is the average down payment in BC. That's for the whole province. In Quebec, uh, that average down payment is about 60,000. So it's about $100,000 less. But of course, Quebec has much lower real estate prices than we do here. You know, the other thing I'll just point out too, and I've talked about this before, I remember seeing stats, and I haven't seen this recently, but Vancouver, Lower Mainland, last stat I saw has the highest, one of the highest percentages of clear title ownership of any jurisdiction in North America. And I can attest that from the front lines again. I sell probably eight, nine, 10, 12 homes a year for people that have got clear title on the home. They do not have a mortgage. I sell another eight or nine or 10 homes with people that have very little mortgage left. And this is why, because they're putting down 25, 30, 35% average down payments, $160,000 on average, and that's for the whole province. You know, that's being weighted down by, by smaller cities in northern BC and other, other areas. In Vancouver, I can tell you that average down payment would be much higher. Couple other things here. This one's pretty funny. Remember the uh, first time home buyers incentive program? It was announced in September of 2019. This was that program that the federal government rolled out to big fanfare saying that this is gonna help affordability. We're gonna help young people get into the housing market. We're going to uh, lower the requirements to get in to qualify. But it's going to be, you know, some sort of a, uh, you know, it's a, a shared equity type mortgage where uh, you will, the government and you will be in bed together. And when you sell, the government will share in any capital gain. Well, it's been in place now for almost two years. And the stats just came out here again from the Western investor on what a complete flop it was. Get this. Two years they had this to big fanfare. Get these numbers. In, in uh, British Columbia, there has been a total of, sorry, in Vancouver, there has been a total of nine homes, nine sales in the last two years that have taken advantage of the first time home buyers incentive program. In Toronto, there's been a total of 39. So in other words, it's been a pretty massive flop as this article points out. I don't know how much this program costs to put together, to advertise, to promote, probably in the millions of dollars for sure. And of course, nobody's taking care, advantage of it. And I don't, I don't blame them. I don't, didn't really pay much attention to them when this came out. Some people were saying it was gonna move the needle on affordability. It was just a big yawn for me. But I don't blame people for not getting in, involved in this. Who wants to get in bed with the government on your, on your principal residence 
and then have them share in all the profits and capital gains. Because you're going to have, if you follow my rules of buying real estate, buying your principal residence and hanging on to it for long periods of time, you keep that house for 20 or 30 years, you're going to be handing over a check for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 to the federal government. Who wants that? All for helping you a little bit on the, on the purchasing side. Final topic here. How about this one that just came across my desk here? We just uh, announced the lowest five-year variable rate in the history of Canada. So this website uh, um, called ratehub.ca uh, just announced that their in-house lender, which is a company called Canwise Financial, and they're a fairly large lender, they are now offering a five-year variable rate mortgage at 0.98%. So just under 1% on a five-year variable, and that is an all-time new Canadian low rate. In, it's incredible. If you told me 10 years ago that we would see mortgage rates just under 1%, uh, I would have said, you're nuts. It would never happen. But there it is. I think I've blogged here before. I think mortgage rates are going to stay, maybe not at, they're not going to stay at these levels, but this is kind of a teaser rate here that's put out there. But mortgage rates are still incredibly low, very close to historic levels. This is what's going to continue driving the market. You know, condo market, for instance, we've had a good little run here so far this year, but we're still not quite to where the prices were in 2017. And of course, if you factor in the interest rates we're enjoying now compared to four years ago, you know, it's more affordable now uh, by a fair bit than what it was back in 2017. Will it continue? Well, I think interest rates are probably going to edge up slowly here over the next few years, but I think no matter what, we're going to be in a low rate environment for the foreseeable future for sure. I'm Owen Bigline. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.